All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Houston Rockets Daily, dude. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button, hit that sub button, post daily Rockets content. I want to make a draft video. Um, I've been going live a lot more on this account, and you know, obviously with this 12-game losing streak, man, there's not much to look forward to on a night-to-night -night basis outside of maybe like Jalen Green, you know, Shangoon, maybe a little Josh Christopher, maybe you know, a little Trevelyan and Knicks, but they don't really get opportunities. Uh, so there's not much to kind of look forward to to end this season outside of like specific players and I guess the overall development and progression of this team but uh, a lot of us Rocket fans are looking at the draft right now and I can't blame them. So basically Houston has the worst record in the NBA right now so that means if that were to end like if season were to end right now this is why I'm so huge on losing games and I just I just got out of bed. Also let me know what you think about the mustache. I love it. The thing is, with Houston, if you're the worst seed, or the worst record, sorry, the furthest you can go in the draft is number five. And you guys, I've been saying this all season, like, if the Rockets get past number five in the pick in the lottery, I think the season's a failure. I think it's, like, a huge failure. If the Rockets end up as, like, the seven or eight pick in the draft, I would view this season as a failure. Um, this season has been tough, and it's been long, and it, it, it's... It's been a pretty wild ride, just like last season. Maybe not as chaotic as last season, but it's been it's it's had its chaos moments, that's for sure. So we're looking at the draft right now, and um, it seems almost like too good to be true that the Rockets end up getting that first pick, if that makes sense. But we did have number two last year. I'm happy with top three. Like I'm happy with top three. That's really what I'm looking for. But today I really want to talk about Chet. Chet's really, really interesting. And this is a dilemma I had last year when trying to figure out who I wanted the Rockets to draft at number two when the Pistons would inevitably select Kate Cunningham. I initially thought, last year, I initially thought Evan Mobley was going to be the guy. Initially, I was part of Mobley Mob. And then I switched to Jalen Green because I'm like, damn, this guy does have like that Kobe-esque scoring potential. I shouldn't have faltered, I think. I, sh I don't think I should have switched up. Not saying Jalen Green won't be a stud. Not saying Evan Moby won't be a stud. But, like, this season before our draft date, when we figure out our lottery, I want to have a s firm pick. I want to have a firm pick. Obviously, I'll have opinions and stuff like that on other guys. But I want to be like, this is who I want to pick at blank. And I don't want to ever change that until the draft happens. And if they draft somebody else, then we're rolling with it. Because... That's what we're here to do. Um, but right now, I'm eyeing Chet Holgram. I, and Chet's a really interesting basketball player. You have a seven-footer. Uh, but the thing about Chet is he weighs 195 pounds. Now, obviously, when rookies come into the NBA, you're going to gain weight. Like, you need... It's, it's not you're going to. You need to gain weight. So you, so you just genuinely need to gain weight. You need to get bigger. You know, it, it honestly doesn't even matter what position you're at. It doesn't matter how big you already are. If you're coming from college to the NBA, you're going to spend a chunk of that offseason, and you're actually going to spend most of that season trying to get to your ideal weight. Chet weighs 195 pounds. So there's concern with Chet and Wood, and there's also concern with Chet and Shangoon just because of like the slowness the not so much defensive versatility, just like kind of slow moving guys. I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case. In fact, I think if the Houston Rockets draft Chet Holgram, I think they'd be making a really, really smart decision. He won't weigh 195 pounds. For example, Evan, Evan Mobley weighs 215. So if Chet gets up 10 pounds, if he Chet gets up five pounds, you're looking at 200. Chet and Shangun should be the future if you're going to draft Chet Holden. In fact, I would kind of prefer Chet to be like the dude over Shangun, but hopefully they'd be able to play together. That's another thing. That's a whole another thing that we're not even really going to discuss in today's video is like, how would Chet and Wood, how would Chet and Shangun match up? We don't even know how the hell Wood and Shangun match up. So that there's like concern there. But the thing is, what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to get at, where the reason why Chet's kind of my guy right now, is because you have a seven footer who can guard so many different positions. Technically, because of his, I, I, like because of his footwork, because of his quickness. But the thing with Chet is, he can run in transition. He can 
hold he can handle the ball in transition he can initiate transition like if he gets a rebound go rebound go find find you know find the point guard find a cutter find an open guy but i think chet's game in the nba i think it would translate perfectly fine because i think of another seven footer who can guard multiple positions and isn't afraid to get out on that and isn't afraid to play out by the perimeter because that's well, chet plays a lot by the perimeter and it's evan Mobley. So obviously we're still kind of trying to scout these players. We're still trying to get a feel of it. March Madness hopefully maybe tells us a little bit. I, the thing is, I don't even know if March Madness really does anything because I look back to last year and I think about a guy like Jalen Suggs who had a huge buzzer beater. What was that? In the final four to get to the championship game. And it never really, like Jalen's having an okay year this year. I guess he's been dealing with injuries and stuff, but like, I just don't think that that really like did anything as far as like skill go. like it's not like I don't think Chet leveled up after he made that shot just because it was in March Madness maybe he did and maybe I'm just wrong but I haven't seen it like openly translate so it's interesting March Madness is interesting oh we're getting here it's like I mean it's March so we're basically here just like a week or so away um, but Chet right now is my guy I'm big on Paolo. I'm not as big on Paolo as I am Jabari and Chet. In fact, Jabari is like right there at 1B. I'm like probably going 1A, Chet, 1B, Jabari, 2 probably Paolo, 3 probably Jaden, 5 maybe AJ. I'll keep you guys covered all season. And obviously all offseason, I'll keep you guys covered on draft stuff. But um, I wanted to make a video on why the Rockets should draft Chet because I just think these are like it's I feel like I'm throwing this. We throw this word around too much generational guys like Evan Mobley. But that's what's looking like it's going to happen with Evan Mobley. Like Evan Mobley looks like a generational type of basketball player, but he actually might just kind of be the start of this new breed of big men. Like this new breed of got like tall, lanky, skinny guys who can play on the perimeter. They can guard on the perimeter and maybe do a little bit of rim protection, hopefully for Chet. Hopefully Chet can do a little rim protection because this is a guy who was averaging three and a half blocks per game. Chet Holgram, a couple of weeks ago, was averaging three and a half blocks per game. So I'm not really that worried about his rim protection. I'm not really worried about his size, if that makes sense, because he's going to bulk up, and he's already a fine rim protector. That's it for today, guys. Go ahead, comment down below. If you had the first pick in the draft, the first pick in the draft, as of right now, who would you draft? Comment that down below. Like button, sub button, as always. I'll see you guys later, man.